Hi, this is Chapter 8 overview video. In Chapter 8 capacitance, we cover capacitors, which will become more important later in the semester, but this is the right place in the semester to introduce it, having covered the voltage and conductors. So what a capacitor is, is basically two parallel plates of conductor that can be charged up with one positive and the other negative so that they are overall electrically neutral. The real life capacitors are usually rolled up like this with an insulator between them which we will call dielectric. But for our purposes, we are going to imagine we are dealing with these parallel plate capacitors. So with the description of capacitors, the section 8.1 defines the capacitance as charge per volume. So capacitance it really measures the capacity to store charge. And what you need to provide in order to store charge is voltage. Now with this definition of capacitance, what I want you to be able to do is calculate the capacitance in some geometries. So when you do this correctly, Capacitance should only depend on the geometry and possibly properties of the dielectric material between the plates. Your textbook goes through some examples, parallel plate, that's the simplest one. When we need some conceptual reference, this is what we'll refer to. And also spherical capacitors and cylindrical capacitors. Please read through these examples carefully. These are both application of what we covered in earlier chapters about electric field and voltage. And you may be asked to do something like this on your exam too. All right, so until we get to circuits, which is where capacitors become more important, there are a couple things that we can cover having introduced the capacitor. So section 8.2 deals with the capacitors, how to combine them, look over it, but we won't really touch on this material until we get to circuits. What I'm really interested in is the expressions for the energy stored in a capacitor. Now your textbook doesn't quite do it in the order I would like to cover it in. I actually like to start with this description here. So I will record a separate video that leads you through these different uh, calculations really leading to this, the energy density of energy stored in electric field. The capacitor gives us an ideal physical setup where we can naturally introduce the idea that electric field itself stores energy. But all the um, relevant formulas are in the section. Please do give it a read through. Um, I, I will have my own video that goes through it in a slightly different order. The one thing I should point out is this uh, surprising factor of one half. If you're just thinking, oh, potential energy should be charged times voltage, there's this surprising factor of one half. Well, it's not that surprising if you went through this integral. It essentially comes down to the fact that first a few charges that got placed on the plates, almost no work was done on them because there was no electric force to work against. So that's one important concept to cover with the capacitors as uh, being the background material. And the second thing that, that uh, first time I was teaching this class, I made the mistake of skipping that I don't repeat anymore is dielectric. So you have seen dielectrics before. When we talk about polarization, um, that this dielectric is what we are talking about. And we are going to look at the description of electricity with the dielectric because the model we develop in sections 8.4 and 8.5, it'll be useful to be able to draw analogy to this when we get to magnetism. So please take a read through it. There'll be a couple questions on your homework about dielectrics, and we will uh, rely on this material more once we get to magnetism. 
So with that, until the next lecture videos, bye.